Mr. Perrault, please go ahead. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today. With me are Deputy Chief Electoral Officers Anne Lawson and Michel Roussel. I'm here with key members of my team to talk, of course, about the 44th general election and the services that Canadians can expect from Elections Canada. First, let me state that we are ready to deliver a safe and secure election on September 20th. Over the last few days, we have been opening local Elections Canada offices across the country's 338 ridings. In a few days, so this is a process underway, we will be able to offer services to electors in, locally in 501 local offices throughout the election period. I want to let you know that our website offers a broad range of information and services directly. And I want to encourage electors to visit elections.ca to access all the information they need to either register or plan their voting experience. Of course, COVID-19 will have an impact on how the election is delivered. For months, we have been consulting with public health authorities across the country, provincial, federal and territorial, to ensure that our services will be offered in a way that is safe for everyone. We have implemented a range of safety measures for our local offices, as well as for election day polls and advance polls. These include, for instance, and these are very familiar to all of you now, mask wearing, physical distancing, physical barriers, and single-use pencils. Electors may bring their own pencils or their, pe their own pen if they wish. As the COVID-19 situation evolves, we will continue to adjust our safety measures based on the recommendations of public health authorities. It is important to note that voters may well be assigned to pol polling locations that are different from the ones they are used to. That's because some of our usual locations are not available this time because of the pandemic. In some cases, this may mean that the location is a little farther away or is located in a non-traditional place or may not meet all of our accessibility criteria. Voters should pay attention to their voter information card and look carefully at the location of their advance poll and election day poll. They should also check if they have accessibility needs whether or not the polling place re meets those needs. And if not, communicate with us. Please contact Elections Canada to help us find you a, a place that will meet your requirements. Voter information cards will be received by early September. That being said, voting in person, whether at a, a local Elections Canada office, at advance polls or on election day, remains the simplest and most convenient way to cast a ballot. For those electors who prefer to vote by mail, this option will also be available. This is not a new option. In fact, Canadians have been voting by mail, even locally, since 1993. Electors who want to vote by mail should plan to do so early. They should leave enough time for their voter kit to get to them and for them to return it to Elections Canada by Elections Day. They can apply by providing proof of identity and address to our online application system. This is the fastest way to receive a kit, and voters can check online to see if their kit has been issued once they've applied, or if their ballot, once completed, has been received. For those who are not able to apply online, we will have traditional mail-in forms available. Electors who vote by mail are responsible for ensuring that their ballot is returned in time. They should check Canada Post schedules for their region. If they are concerned about their balling not arriving in time, they can bring it to their polling station on election day or they can have a friend or neighbor bring it. The important thing is that they, it is brought at a polling station within their electoral district. It's also important to note that by law, electors who apply to vote by mail cannot simply change their mind later on and vote another way. If they have a problem with their kit, if they have not received their kit, they should contact us. And again, we'll find a way to make sure that they can vote. But they cannot simply change their mind. So I encourage electors to plan early and choose the voting option that works best for them. Now, I know that Canadians 
are used to getting complete results on election night, but it will be different for this election. The count of regular uh, ballots on ordinary polling day and advanced polls will be completed uh, on the night of the election as usual. However, the count of mail-in ballots will start after election day once all the mail-in ballots that electors have dropped off at polling stations have been returned and integrity checks have been performed. If the volume of mail-in ballots is high, as we've seen in other jurisdictions during the pandemic, it will take longer for returning officers to count those ballots. In most locations, this should be done within two days, but in some, in some uh, districts, it could take as long as five days, depending on the volume and the distribution. In all cases, the, the, the vote can be observed, sorry, the count can be observed by candidates from beginning uh, to end from candidate representatives and daily result updates will be published. With the changes to the process, getting accurate information about the election has never been so important. Canadians can do their part. By registering and updating your information, you are making sure that you will get a voter information card that will tell you everything you know about where and when to vote. So make sure that you are registered and check to confirm that your information is accurate by visiting elections.ca. Our website also remains your destination for accurate information about the electoral process, including all the safeguards that we have in place to protect the integrity and the safety of the vote. I'd like to end today with a message about supporting electoral democracy. Often this is something that we take for granted, which is perhaps a testimony to the high level of trust that Canadians have in their electoral process. And that's something that we can be proud of. But it's also something that needs to be supported. I invite anyone who wishes to support our electoral process, or is just curious to see how it's done, to come experience an election from the inside just one day. So come and work for us. Be one of more than 200,000 Canadians who work for federal elections to make them a reality. I encourage everyone to take advantage of the election, to get involved, and to vote. Thank you, and I will now answer questions. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. We'll start this time with a reporter in the room before moving on to the teleconference. I rappelle une question et... Just a reminder, one question and one follow-up. If we have time, uh, we will start the queue over. Thank you. It's uh, Bill Curry from the Globe and Mail. Uh, you had mentioned before the campaign was official that it could cost more than the usual amount, but now that we're actually into a campaign, can you provide an update on what our election normally costs, what's the latest revision, and what are the, the drivers of those extra costs? The cost of elections varies based on a number of factors, including the number of voters, of course, that evolves from election to election. The last election was just over 500, I think it was $506 million. At this point, um, we estimate that it'll be around 510,000, uh, sorry, 610 million dollars. Um, this is a very unique election. Things all elections uh, uh, have things that are somewhat unpredictable. Um, so things may change. So I'm, I caution about that number. It may evolve depending on the circumstances and things we need to address. But at this point, 612 million is, is uh, the estimate. And I'm sure you've seen in the news, there's a lot of debate right now about whether federal public servants should, uh, whether there should be a mandatory requirement to be vaccinated. Uh, are you imposing any kind of mandatory vaccine order on Elections Canada workers of just the campaign, and if not, why not? So the measures that we have um, in place reflect consultations that we had uh, over the last year and continue to have with public health authorities at all level. Um, these recommendations do not include mandatory vaccination, whether they be for, for, uh, for electors, for workers, or candidate representatives. In the next um, three week or so, uh, poll, uh, uh, returning officers will be hiring some 250,000 Canadians to work at the polls to serve approximately 18 million Canadians. These are the same Canadians, these are the same people that you meet every day at the grocery store. The difference is that the polls are a controlled environment where safety measures can be applied more rigorously. And if you look back 
of the last 18 months. We've had elections in Canada provincially. We've had territorial elections. There have been elections around the world. And there has, there has not been outbreaks uh, of COVID um, as a result of in-person voting. And that, to me, is a testimony of the fact that polling places are a controlled environment where we can apply safety measures in a way that is rigorous and ensure the safety of everyone present in those polls. Of course, we will, uh, we will continue to follow the advice and continue to consult with public health uh, authorities, and we'll, we will adjust uh, our measures based on their recommendations. Operator, we can take questions from the teleconference now. On peut passer à la téléconférence. Thank you. Merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, puis sur le tel maintenant pour poser une question. Our first question, Tom Korski, Black Locks reporter. Your line is open. Actually, they are no longer on the line. So our first question will be Julie Gordon Reuters. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi there. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, you basically answered what I was looking for, but maybe you could give us a bit more color on, um, I'm, I'm interested in the the counting of uh, the mail-in ballots and, and how you're going to be verifying those. Can you give us a little more, more detail on that verification process and why that could take some up to five days? The verification process will not take up to five days. That should be done the day, uh, the day after. Essentially, we are verifying the outer envelope, and there's, there's more technical information available on our website, but essentially we are verifying the information on the outer envelope, which, in, which includes a signed declaration by the elector, includes a barcode, and includes uh, the, the address information to make sure it is the voting kit that we sent to that elector. We're also going to verify that that person is not voted in person. So if somebody walks up on polling day and said, I received, I did not, sorry, I did not receive my, uh, my uh, mail-in kit, that person will swear an oath to that effect and will be allowed to vote in person. We will be able to check to make sure that that is true and set aside any, uh, any outer envelope from the mail-in uh, ballots uh, that, that matches the uh, voters' information at the polls. So there's, there's a number of controls that take place to make sure we have the, uh, the, 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 the postal ballot from the right person and that the person has not voted uh, twice. Okay, and, and so then just to clarify, the count, the count takes five days, up to five days, just based upon um, the volume of, of uh, mail-in ballots in a given riding? Yes, it's important to note that the count is done locally for, for local electors. So uh, people who vote by mail, electors who vote by mail, um, from their electoral district, their kit will be sent back to their returning office, and that reduces the travel time for the kits and, and, and ensures that we minimize the risk of, of, of uh, mail-in kits arriving too late. So they're counted locally, and ba depending on the distribution, we may see more uh, mail-in kits in some districts than others. Thank you. Next question, prochaine question. Thank you, merci. Our next question, Joan Bryden, the Canadian Press. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Joan Bryden, your line is open. If you're using a speakerphone, please pick up your hands uh, and unmute your line. Uh, I, I was actually wanting to ask you again about the um, why not mandatory vaccination. Joan Bryden, your line is open. If you're using a speakerphone, please pick up your hands and unmute your line. repeat the, uh, the answer that I, that I gave earlier. As I said, we, we are applying safety measures um, that have been uh, discussed with public health authorities across the country at all levels, and we'll continue to adjust those measures. Um, the recommendations so far uh, do not include making vaccination mandatory. And as I indicated, uh, you know, we are recruiting ordinary Canadians, serving ordinary Canadians, and they will encounter them in locations that are highly controlled, much more controls than the kind of encounters you see uh, at the grocery store uh, every day. So we have good reason, uh, and I think Dr. Tam was quite uh, clear when she spoke um, not very long ago, I think it was less than a week ago, uh, that it is perfectly safe to vote at a polling place if the proper measures are, are, are in place. And that's what we're focusing on. Is there a follow-up? 
ample proper measures are, are yes. in place. Yes, hi. That's what we're focusing on. I was wondering then if you could, um, it, you, you said that thus far you have, you're not getting recommendation to require mandatory vaccinations. Might you then do that? And how difficult would that be sort of mid, midway through a campaign um, when you're recruiting um, poll workers to then say, oops, you know, you all need to be fully vaccinated? Yes, uh, obviously it becomes more challenging as we go forward. However, vaccination rates are high and we have every reason to, to think that our poll workers will, will be uh, at least as vaccinated as the general population. So a large, large number of the poll workers will in fact uh, be vaccinated. Thank you. Next question, prochaine question. Thank you, merci. Our next question, Evan Dyer, CBC. Your line is open, have la parole. Hi, good morning. I wonder if you could um, just uh, talk about some of the natural hazards and obstacles to voting, such as floods, wildfires, and so on. For example, the uh, wildfire situation in BC right now, uh, what provisions would you anticipate making if wildfires uh, drove people to evacuate their homes, for example, move to a new riding? What kinds of things uh, could you do or have you done in the past? So this is something that, unfortunately, we do encounter practically at every election, whether it's floodings or storms or, or fires. We obviously follow that very closely across the country and monitor the evolution of, of, of fires or other national disasters and look at, at where people are, are being evacuated, where that's the case. There's a range of measures that we can take and we've taken in the past, and that includes, for example, at the last election uh, in Manitoba, we had a, a, a special polling location for, for people who are evacuated in Winnipeg. And so it's, it's relatively easy to do, especially when people are evacuated in a, in a particular hotel or area where they're all present and they can vote from outside their district in a manner that really resembles uh, what they would do in their, uh, in their home district. Otherwise, there, we can uh, use vote by mail. So we, we, we're in contact with, with uh, the authorities and we follow what's happening. And as the situation evolves in the election, we'll adapt service to make sure that there are voting options for every Canadian. Thanks. And you also uh, are conducting this election with a new federal law bill. Well, it was Bill C-30, now federal law, um, on disinformation, deliberate attempts to mislead the electorate. Uh, how many people or what kind of resources, if any, are you devoting during the campaign to looking for violations of that law? Uh, or is this sort of a complaints-based system? Is it something that you only look at after the voting is done? Can you just talk about how that new law has, has uh, affected your operations in practice? So the, the provision is a, a variation on a provision that existed in the past. There's an element of intent that was clarified in the legislation, but certainly the, uh, the, the provision is not entirely new. And, and it captures a, a very specific number of instances of disinformation uh, that is prohibited, including disinformation on certain aspects of the, of the party leaders. Um, this is essentially, as you indicated, a complaints-based process, and the complaints should be made to the Commissioner of Canada Elections. The Commissioner uh, is responsible for investigation, investigating violations of the Act, and he does so uh, independently from the Chief Electoral Officer. So if people have instances that they believe uh, is in violation of that provision, they should inform the Commissioner. Thank you. Next question, prochaine question. Thank you. Our next question, la prochaine question, Tom Perry, CBC News. Your line is open. Have la parole. Oh, hi. Thanks for um, taking uh, my question. I'm just trying to figure out if you could sort of paint a picture of what it's going to look like for Canadians who do go to the polls on voting day. What's going to be different for them compared to uh, previous elections? At the poll itself, they can expect to see uh, essentially the kind of measures that they now have been seeing uh, for, for the last 18 months. So we will have people in charge of ensuring that the place um, is clean, uh, that, that the electors are properly distanced. Uh, they will see, for example, the, these uh, physical uh, transparent barriers uh, that will separate the, the poll workers uh, uh, that will service them uh, uh, to allow them to vote. Uh, there will be masks. If, if Canadian 
Canadians do not have a mask, we will offer a mask. We've done, uh, we, we've purchased a very, very large number uh, of masks. And uh, of course, hand sanitizing lotions and uh, disposable uh, pencils. And as I indicated earlier, anyone who wants to bring their pen or pencil uh, is welcome to do that. So basically what they will see is the uh, is the same kind of measures that you would have seen in a, in a grocery store, but in a very controlled uh, environment. Uh, and so that uh, is an important aspect of the, of the safety uh, of the in-person voting. Just from a security uh, point of view, uh, given the number of mail-in ballots that you're anticipating uh, in, in this election, what measures are you putting in place to ensure that we don't see people voting, say, by mail-in, but also trying to cast a ballot on voting day? Yes. So when you apply, when an elector applies to vote by mail, their name is is automatically struck off the list. So the lists that are used on polling there or advanced polls have names that are struck, and these are people who've request a, a, a voting kit. If somebody wishes to vote uh, on polling day and, and their name is struck, they'll have to explain why, and if, they, if they've lost their ballot, if, if it's been misplaced or if they've not received it, then they will swear an oath and a, they will be marked as having voted in person and as having received a um, special ballot. These records will then be used the next day to verify against all of the mail-in ballots that we do not have either two mail-in ballots by a single person or a mail-in ballot by someone who has voted uh, in person. So these controls are made after polling day in the presence of candidate representatives and that's why uh, we're, we're taking the time in this election because of the volumes to make sure it's done properly uh, with observers present. Thank you. Next question. Prochaine question. Thank you. Our next question. La prochaine question, Ray Chan from Sing Tao Daily. Your line is open. Have la parole. Uh, yeah. And you just mentioned that there will be a much more higher percentage of uh, mail in voting. Can you specific uh, how many percentage in the past and what prediction in this election? So we, uh, we have been conducting surveys over the last year. Um, for most of the year, the survey results we've been getting are fairly consistent at between four and five million. Um, just before the call of the election, uh, the number uh, was lower. It was between two and three million. Uh, I expect this could go back up again, so it's not entirely predictable. Uh, but we, we have, uh, we have uh, kits for more than five million voters, that, that's for sure. In the past, just by way of comparison, uh, we would get approximately 50,000 uh, electors nationally, 50,000 who would vote locally by mail. So it's, it's quite a dramatic change. We've had to, of course, uh, increase our capacity quite significantly with, to deal uh, with such an increase in, in, in postal voting. Thank you. Is there a follow-up? And that's okay. Thanks a lot. Merci. Prochaine question. Next question. Thank you. Our next question, Tom Korski from Black Locks Reporter. Your line is open. Have la parole. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pro. Are you laying out more than four advanced polls? I'm sorry, I misheard that question. I, I beg your pardon. Are you laying out more than four advanced polls? So there are four days of advanced polls uh, that are provided in the legislation, and that's the service that we'll be offering. If that's, if I understood your question correctly. So it's, it's the uh, f Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of the weekend that precedes polling day. So it's, it's statutory then. My other question, I, I want to clarify, I'm not looking for trouble, but I want to clarify the mask business. Your authorities make it clear that uh, local health authority rules would apply. But um, I, I'm not going to a liquor store. I'm, I'm exercising my franchise. I understand there will be free masks and everyone is reasonable, but if I have asthma or I'm a civil libertarian, whatever, I cannot be denied and you will not deny me my ballot if I choose not to be masked and I'm six feet away from everyone else, correct? Well, you have to be careful here. I think electors have a responsibility, whether it's by personal choice or even for medical reasons. Now, there are medical exemptions, but they should plan their vote. And if you do not intend uh, to vote with a mask, I would encourage you uh, to vote uh, by mail. 
Now, if you, uh, if you have a medical exemption and you've not been able to vote uh, with a mask, um, uh, sorry, to vote by mail, sorry, in advance, and you have a, a medical reason not to wear a mask, then you will not be denied the right to vote. But if it's just a matter of personal choice and the, and the mask is mandatory in the jurisdiction uh, in which you're voting, then we will apply those rules. Thank you. Next question. Prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question. Next question. Raphael Pirot, Agence QMI. Next question. Agence QMI. Please go ahead. Question. Yes, I'd like to know. And perhaps it's not up to you to answer this question necessarily, but given the pandemic, do you expect to receive fewer votes than you normally would? Answer, that is a very difficult question to answer. Our role is to ensure that people have every opportunity to vote. Safe and secure opportunities to vote. With respect to the rate of participation, we always hope that many people will vote, of course. But of course, some, some of these factors are political in nature. So electors' motivations is not something that is up to Elections Canada. Our role is to ensure that we have accessible, well understood mechanisms that will allow people to vote. So over the years, we have seen different rates of turnout. We've seen lower, sometimes the, the turnout is lower from one election to the next. Uh, but you can't, one can't always explain all the factors that influence these rates. Follow-up question. Thank you. So it, just to change the subject, if I correctly understood you, I thought during the technical briefing earlier, I heard that it was going to be difficult to recruit people for the current election and that there are difficulties indeed in such recruiting. Could you please confirm that and explain why that is the case? Answer, well, look, we're just beginning to recruit people. Last time we were hoping to recruit about 250,000 people, and that is also the case this time. Last time we managed to recruit 232,000. So it's always, of course, uh, a challenge during a short uh, writ period. We can't, uh, of course, we can't recruit people ahead of the writ being dropped since we don't know the dates. But uh, it always does present certain challenges. And uh, however, we will see over the coming days and weeks how recruiting goes. Once again, as I said, I invite all Canadians to take a day. I think it's a wonderful experience. And uh, please uh, take a day to contribute to democracy. And you will be compensated as well. But it's a unique opportunity to see from the inside how these things work. So please do not hesitate to contact us. We will certainly have work for you. Thank you. Next question. Merci. Thank you. Our next question, Sarah Turnbull, CTV News. Your line is open. Have la parole. Hi there. Um, will the cost of rapid test kits be considered a campaign expense that will count against a candidate's spending cap? So campaigns that purchase uh, uh, kits uh, or, or, or uh, protective equipment, uh, these are these are, are, are material that are expenses under the Act. Um, they are reimbursable, but they are subject to the overall limit for candidates and, and political parties. So it is a reimbursable election expense if it is used during the campaign as part of the campaign activities. Thanks. Was there a follow-up? No, no, thanks. Merci. Prochaine question, next question. Thank you. Merci. Our next question, Karina Roman, CBC News. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Yes, hello. I just like to clarify numbers. When you talk about um, how many uh, special mail-in ballots you've had before locally versus what you're expecting now, that didn't include that 50,000 you quoted, that didn't include, you know, people out of the country and Canadian Armed Forces and prisoners, right? Because the number we got in the technical briefing was different. I just want to be very clear about what the number is in terms of a normal election versus now, not just local versus local. Yes, yeah, so overall the number, I'm looking at my colleague, is, is around 250,000, something like that. That includes some 35,000 uh, 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 Canadians abroad 
and, and of course military and a range of other special ballots, uh, national electors who are voting away from their electoral district. So the 50,000 figure that I gave was only for electors who are in their electoral district and vote by mail. Michel? I will clarify. Um, 15,000 15,000 50, electors is the total number of electors who voted by mail. So it does include um, an estimate of 5,000 who voted inside their electoral districts, but the vast majority were expat voters or absentee electors outside of their electoral districts. But those are those who voted um, by mail. The vast majority of electors who voted by special ballot at the last election did vote in person at points of services for Elections Canada. Uh, the current election will be different. We'll have more vote by mail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the global mail. figure actually, the global figure is actually 50,000, and now we're expecting millions. Just to clarify, that's not my follow-up, but... Yes, yeah, so, so po uh, postal ballots are a, a, a species of, of, uh, of, of uh, spe what we call special ballots, and they're used for different ca categories of electors, including, as you mentioned, the, uh, the military, for example. So as Mr. Roussel explained, 50 includes all mail-in, which, which included 5,000 local mail-in, and the balance is either national or, uh, or 35,000 from abroad. That's the figure at the last election. Okay, thank you. So my follow-up question is, since it's going to take some time to count these quite a few more million that you're expecting, um, what is your thoughts on the impact that will mean on when we might know who a winner is? Well, uh, again, there's a fair amount of uncertainty. As I said, the, uh, first of all, in terms of the total number, um, it, you know, our surveys have varied between two, uh, two to three million to four and five million, so that's different. Um, it depends on the distribution. Uh, uh, these, these votes will not necessarily be distributed equally, e equally amongst uh, electoral districts, so that will impact uh, the duration of the counting process. And finally, the margin of victory will be a key factor. If it's a very tight race and there's a large number of postal ballots, then it, took, it can take a few days uh, to find out who is the, uh, who's the actual winner. Thank you. Next question, prochaine question. Thank you. Our next question, David Common. Please state your media and go ahead with your question. I vous la parole. Yes, thank you very much. It's David Common with CBC News. Um, Mr. Perot, I, I just given that this is uh, not your first go around with an election, when you list off the various um, changes and measures that you had to take place for, for this election, can you put that in context about how this election will be different from all those others that you've known? Well, I would say every every election is unique in, in a number of ways, but this one may be a bit more unique than others. I mean, the, the first thing that stands out, of course, is, is, is the uh, postal vote, which we haven't known in such large numbers in the past. We do expect whatever the number to be significantly larger uh, than before. And that also impacts the count. I think for Canadians, uh, having final results in all electoral districts on the night of the election is something that they're used to. And so that's a very different experience for Canadians uh, if that's not the case in a number of electoral districts. Um, and the other thing I would mention for, for, from the point of view of electors, um, it's the polling locations. At this point, we are in the process of finalizing the polling locations. Returning officers have been working extremely hard across the country to find proper polling locations, uh, but it's, we know that it's not easy, and we know that some locations will be farther away. We know that some locations will not be the usual ones or may not be accessible. So these are, these are unfortunate circumstances, but we will do everything that we can to make the vote um, as accessible as, as is possible. So that's, that's an illustration of the same, some of the challenges we're, we're, we'll be facing that are perhaps unique in this election. And uh, just, uh, Mr. Pro, in terms of uh, the count, uh, a number of my colleagues are asking about that, but given that you could have somewhere in the order of one out of every four ballots cast being sent to the central office, what measures do you have to take differently uh, this year, this election, in order to count them? 
just want to clarify because it's an important point that the vast majority of the postal votes will not go to the central uh, central uh, place in Ottawa. They will be sent locally. So any elector voting in their electoral district by mail, their ballot will be issued locally and returned to the local returning officer or, uh, or brought back uh, at the poll, uh, as the case may be. But the local aspect is important because it does reduce significantly the travel time for the, the kits to go uh, back and forth uh, to the elector and back to, uh, to returning officers uh, in order to reduce the number of uh, the number of of of, of uh, votes that uh, arrive late. Now, in terms of, of answering directly your, your questions, certainly the returning officers and their teams will have been uh, have had to look at larger locations to store the kits, to have counting processes in the kits, uh, uh, counting uh, process uh, after election day. And, and, and this will be a new experience for them, uh, uh, counting such large numbers uh, locally uh, in the presence of, of, of candidate representatives. Merci. Prochaine question. Thank you. Next question. Once again, please press star one if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, puis sur étoile maintenant pour poser une question. Our next question, Andy Saint-André, TVA Nouvelle. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Next question, TVA Nouvelle. Please go ahead. Yes. Hello, Mr. Perrault. I'd like to hear you answer in French. I'm sorry to ask you to uh, repeat the answers you've given in English, but essentially when it comes to mail-in ballots, how will you ensure that Canadians will only vote once? That is to say that some people aren't able to game the system and vote by mail-in ballot as well as show up in person at a polling office and vote on, on election day as well. Answer, it's, an, it's a good and important question. People must have faith in our, the controls we have in place to avoid such things. The special kit that's being, that, that is requested when the elector registers for it will we'll, we'll remove that person's name from the, vote, from the elector's list. So every elector who has applied for a kit will no longer appear to vote in person. It's possible that an elector comes to the po on polling day and says that they did not receive a kit and there may be exceptional circumstances in which this is true. In that case, we will allow that elector to solemnly affirm or swear that they have not received their kit and that they are voting for the first time that day. But the day after the election, and that is when the counting begins, uh, mail-in ballots that is, we will be able to compare envelopes that we received with the names that appear as um, stricken from the list and uh, then compare that list with those who have sworn or solemnly affirmed that they did not receive the kit. So there's a whole verification process that takes place before we begin to count the mail-in ballots. And if we can see that someone has voted more than once, then those envelopes will be set aside. This is a process that takes place the day, the very next day after the election in the presence of officials of Elections Canada and observers. We, we ensure that the candidates also have representatives that are uh, observing this verification process for to be able to uh, identify cases of double voting. Very well. May I ask a follow-up question? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. So in this, along the same lines, you said that there were two to five days th that it would take you to uh, count the mail-in ballots. Uh, everything will be double-checked, triple-checked, I imagine. So inevitably, people should not expect a result on election night. It will take a few days to confirm which government uh, has been elected. Earlier, you talked about places that were difficult to find find that may be uh, farther away. Do you believe you will be able to find enough places that people will be able to go and vote? What do you think the percentage of people will vote by mail this year, this time as compared to those who will go vote in person? Answer, well, I can tell you that uh, over 16,000, about 12,000 have already been confirmed when it comes to polling stations. We are satisfied that we will be able to identify places that we know. Of the remaining 4,000, we have identified alternative sites that are now being uh, checked. Uh, so good work has already been done by the returning officers. In many cases, 
it will be the same uh, place vo polling stations as in previous elections. But in other uh, cases, it may be something unusual like a hotel or a conference room in a hotel. So people need to become familiar with this information when they receive their vote, their voter card to ensure that it works for them. If they, for example, they have accessibility challenges well, uh, and accessibility requirements, then they need to ensure that they will be able to vote uh, and they can contact Elections Canada. We can transfer, we can uh, issue a transfer certificate, for example. So people, however, are responsible for checking the information that they receive on their voter information card. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Merci. The last question, Cormac McSweeney, City News. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Yes, I'm just wondering if you could confirm what happens if somebody does decide to vote twice. They send in a mail-in ballot and then they show up in person. Are both of those ballots then, um, you know, spoiled ballots and destroyed and, and not counted? And uh, what is the consequence for somebody who purposely decides to do that? Uh, are there penalties that they will face as a result? Yes. So two things. Once the ballot, the regular ballot, is in the ballot box, of course, you can't trace it back to the elector. But that person's name has been struck from the list, which is why we're retaining all the postal ballots where there's an outer envelope that we can match to the elector and set that envelope aside if the elector is, is struck from the list as having voted. So the, 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 the vote that will be set aside will be the postal vote. And any, any instance of double vote will be referred to the Commissioner of Canada Elections for, uh, for his consideration and investigation. There are serious offenses under the Act for attempting to vote twice. And you're expecting millions of people to vote by mail this time. You say, you know, electors should use the appropriate time frame to make sure that it's in on election day so that it can be counted. Do you have any timeline for that? Uh, if, if people are listening right now, this may be the only time they really pay attention to this. So yes. how far in advance should they be set, sending this in via mail? Are you talking seven days, 10 days? What would be an appropriate time frame to make sure that it does get in and it does get counted? So I think there's a, so thank you for that question. Um, the deadline, if you're voting from outside of your electoral district, is, is it has to be back in Ottawa at 6 o'clock on polling day. If you're casting your ballot by mail in your electoral district, it has to be in by close of polls at the local returning office or brought to any uh, polling location on polling day uh, in your electoral district. So an elector who has doubt, they've got their special ballot kit, they've received it, but it's late in the campaign, they should check, first of all, Canada Post. They have information about schedules. And, and of course, the, 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 the time it takes will vary depending on where you are in Canada. It's a very, as we all know, very vast country, and so it, it, it can vary significantly. So take the time to check what is the was the approximate time and if if you fear that it is too tight then uh, a good option for you is to bring it either directly to the office of the returning officer or wait on polling day to bring it to a local polling uh, station um, anywhere in your electoral district and you can ask a friend or relative to bring it for you i hope that answers Was there a follow-up? Um, sure, yeah, if, um, if I can. What about uh, voting at returning offices or Elections Canada offices? You haven't addressed that, I don't think, in this uh, news conference. Um, what are the rules around people heading to those offices at any point in this campaign, or, or w when is the deadline for that as well, uh, to make sure that they can cast in person at a different time if they're afraid about crowds, let's say, at polling stations? So, so throughout the election period, voters can uh, attend the office of the returning officer to cast a ballot. It will be a special ballot that is that is cast at that point. Um, it's similar to a, a postal ballot without the without the postal element. Uh, voters will expect they should expect to see there the same safety measures that they will have uh, at, at local uh, um, uh, polling places. So the same wearing of masks and sanitizing uh, measures, the same distancing will take place, so that it is a safe environment for voters to go to whether whether it's the office of the returning officer or a local polling, uh, polling station, it will make no difference from that perspective. As I said at the outset, these, uh, there's 501 
of these uh, local offices across the country and they are being opened as we speak. Thank you. Next question, prochaine question. There are no further questions registered at this time. Nous n'avons plus de questions pour le moment. And I'd like to turn the meeting back over to Natasha Gauthier. Please go ahead, have la parole. Uh, thank you. Did our uh, gentleman in the room have an additional question? All good? That concludes our, con our press conference. Uh, ceci conclut notre conférence de presse. Merci de vous être joint à nous. Thanks for joining us. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions, of course, uh, Media Relations at Elections Canada is happy 